So today we're going to be talking about the seven biggest mistakes sellers make when sourcing for Amazon FBA. But more importantly, we're also going to speak about how you can avoid those mistakes. I've been living in China since 2013. And while I had a sourcing agency here, I sourced more than a thousand products. And to be honest, most of the people that came to me for sourcing, they only came to me and wanted to, you know, use a sourcing service because they did some mistakes that hurt them really bad. So if you can avoid those mistakes, you don't have to hire any other agency, but you can source all by yourself. So before we go into the very first Amazon FBA sourcing tip, make sure you subscribe to that channel. Just hit the little button below and you're good to go. The very first and biggest mistake seller make is underestimating the importance of supply chain. So what's your supply chain? It's basically everything concerning your supplier and how your goods are produced and how fast they move to you and how reliable this all is set up. So if your products aren't produced properly and aren't produced in the time that you agree to, you're going to have big issues when the products aren't there when you need them and you're running out of stock. It can hurt your Amazon FBA account really, really bad. Running out of stock will certainly keep you from growing. The next thing is the right quality. If your supplier doesn't have the right quality for you consistently every time, then people will notice, your customer will notice. And if you're selling those products, you're going to get really bad reviews and that's going to hurt you. Then it's the right labeling. There were so many people that uh, had the product produced, finally did it uh, and got it shipped. And when it arrived in the Amazon warehouse, they realized the labeling was done wrong and Amazon rejected the shipment and sent it all back. Can you imagine what it cost you to do that? Another part of the supply chain are consistent prices. If your supplier all of a sudden decides to increase your price by 20, 30 or 40 percent, you have an issue because all of a sudden you might be not as profitable anymore. And I get it. The supply chain is the thing that people kind of have to have, right? When you start your Amazon FBA business, I know you just want to go at it. You want to start selling as soon as possible. You want to make the passive income and the money claim kind of like everyone talks about online. You know what I mean? But you have to take this step so serious because no, um, it doesn't matter how far and how fast you come. If your supply chain crumbles, your whole business can die overnight. The second biggest mistake I see people make is not getting enough quotations. Usually people go out and ask three or five suppliers to get a quotation. And I say that's not enough. Usually when we go out and we, we ask suppliers for quotations, we don't just go on Alibaba and get the first five. You know what I mean? We always get between 20 and 50 quotes and study them in detail. Now, it seems like a lot, but one thing you really have to understand is that um, when in the Western culture, we always believe that uh, the higher the price, the better the quality, right? Or at least in most cases, that's true. In China, that's very, very different, especially with all the trading agencies on Alibaba. You really have to make sure to compare as many quotes as possible. Because it could be that you have 20 quotes and one supplier is a lot cheaper, but when you get the sample later, you realize the quality is actually as good or sometimes even better. So it's absolutely worth it to go through the hassle and get a few more quotations to look through because this can save you big amounts of of money on your order. Let me know below in the comments how many quotes you normally get or how many did you plan to get. Let's talk about samples for a minute because the third biggest mistake people make is not getting enough samples. Well, once you have all the quotations, how many samples should you get? Usually people look into it and say, well, maybe this supplier, maybe that, and then you get three or five samples. And that also is not enough. You have to have as many samples as possible for all of the quotes that you like. You have to get a sample. It makes it so much faster to have a lot of samples because usually when you, when you order samples, sometimes they don't look anything like they did in the pictures. So when you finally receive all those samples, after a week or two or three, then you look at it and it's just not good. So you toss it away and you order another one. And this can take so much time that you could have spent on working on your business that you can have launched earlier than your competition does because they get stuck getting samples. So get as many samples as possible. Now I hear you saying, well, samples are really expensive and they can get expensive, especially if you get a lot of them. But we're going to do a video on how to save a lot of money on your samples. And if the video is already up, then you can find it up here. If it's not there yet, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the video when we release it. One of the quick tips and kind of takeaways from that video is that you can bundle samples. So if you have someone in China that can bundle all of these samples for you, put them in one package and send them to you, that's going to save you big amounts of money already here. 
The next biggest mistake I see people do is not doing the right steps. And not doing the right steps can mean uh, that you're spending a lot more money than you wanted to and can mean that you need a lot longer than you actually plan to source your product. So a lot of times people go in and they ask a few suppliers and then ask them for a sample customized with all of their logos and their changes and their colors and the packaging and all of this stuff. Well, if you, in the very first stage, it's just all about filtering out the right supplier. And if you want to have a reliable supplier that you can trust that can deliver the quality you want, you have to do things a little different and go in, in very specific steps. So let's recap those steps. Very first, you get a lot of quotations. Then you look at all of those quotes and order samples from the suppliers that look good. The simple samples that you get, you compare with the quotes and with each other and you filter out three to five suppliers. Then those three to five suppliers are gonna be the suppliers you're working with for the customized sample. And then one of those suppliers is gonna be your supplier. And the other ones that you have, you can always keep as a backup. As long as they already got you a, a customized sample, you can always go back to them or use them in leverage when you negotiate with the one supplier that you actually wanna go with. And that gets me to the next point, negotiations. You have to negotiate with your supplier. I know in the Western culture, we sometimes feel even guilty to negotiate because we don't want to make uh, the, the, the person we're buying from feel bad or feel like their products aren't worth it, you know? But in China, it's very different. First off, it's a part of the culture. Second off, you're going to always going to get prices that are too high just because you're not Chinese. <laughs> Already the supplier knows that you don't really know how much the product should be and they're charging you too much. So you have to to negotiate. Use some things as leverage and tell them that they're not the only one you're getting quotations for. And actually we have another video on how to get the best price for your product just up here. Mistake number six is getting lost in all the constant back and forth with your supplier. I know at times it can feel like we're getting drip fat with information, right? And we're getting drip fat with answers, like we're sending five questions and we're only getting one answer. And we send another four questions and we only get one answer. And we send another three and we didn't even get an answer to that question. It's a very simple way to avoid that and to avoid wasting all of the time and that's to use an inquiry sheet and basically what that's that is it's a it's, it's one file with all of the things that you need to know that you send off when you get your quotation and then you ask the supplier to simply fill all the fields and then you don't have to go constantly back and forth with them but maybe just two or three times to clarify all the information that you wanted to know i would love to give you that sheet for free so all you have to do is join my free web class on how to source your product in china without getting screwed by alibaba suppliers because if you join that class you're just getting my sheet for free and I'll send it to you per email. Find the link below in the subscription and sign up. Now, the seventh mistake is one of the biggest killers and that's not doing a quality control or doing a quality control but doing it too late. Look, the quality control is a must. You have to do it. There's no way around it. Because here's the thing, the risk you're taking not doing is, is enormous. What do you do if the products arrive at your doorstep and the rat socks that you order are pink? People order their product and then they get delivered and the quality is bad or they are false or the color is different or the labeling has gone wrong or something's happened, especially if you're sending to directly to the Amazon FBA warehouse, but also if you're just sending it to your own garage or to your own house or wherever you're going to send it. What are you going to do if the product quality is not as you want? Do you want to ship it all back? you have to pay for that and it's it, it will kill your complete margin on your product you lose all the money you lose the time and again if you ship the product back and you run out of stock in amazon running out of stock is a critical algorithm point that will that will stop your listing from growing if you run out of stock once it's already critical if you run out of stock twice you have no way of ranking back up fast it's just the algorithm makes that impossible because Amazon is looking for the uh, for, for for the sellers that can sustain their products. So when should you make a quality control? Basically, you make a quality control. Uh, of course, you look at the samples and you control those before you pay your seventy percent net payment. So you deposit thirty percent, and before you release the second payment, you hire a third-party quality control to come in and have a look. Well, now that can cost a few hundred dollars to do that but it's so, so, so important. I would say one out of 10 orders have gone wrong at that point or there are too many faults and you want to avoid that. So make sure you invest that money. There's a company that I love to recommend uh, that's Asia Inspection. They recently changed their name, but I put all the links in the description below. So if you want to make sure your business isn't killed before you even started, make sure you avoid this top seven mistakes. And 
if it's already a lot of sound, uh, quote, a lot of quotations. And the quotations you get, you get with, um, and then one of those suppliers are gone. And then one of those is getting <laughs> ways to avoid that is to use so, um, then you also then you make sure you follow all those seven so if you want to be 